Mindset right out of the gate. In tennis, you're not trying to hit a straight ball. If you're trying to do topspin backhand, you wouldn't use a neutral grip and try to bow the wrist and try to go over the ball with a bowed wrist. You're going to turn the racket in your hands and close it so that you can perform something that's very powerful. And what's powerful about the racket sports and ping pong and tennis is that we're playing with curvature. Anytime you try to go straight, it's like driving with your foot on the gas and on the brake at the same time, significantly reducing the amount of speed that you can produce. But when you're trying to curve the ball, you're going to get way more speed and way more control. Stay with us. This is super important for all of you who slice and pull the ball. So to start things off, I got a hockey stick. See that curved blade on that puppy? And high lie basket. In order for me to go that way, this is how I'm gonna be throwing. So notice my hand leads the basket, and if I didn't have this curved beak over here, the ball would roll out the back. So if I, had, I take the, a saw to that and go straight out, I'm gonna to have to do this to make sure the ball goes in that direction. So that's not gonna work very well. And that's typically what happens if you look at what we talked about with the tennis racket. If I have a neutral grip square face, my hands are always going to lead first in every sport, every discipline. Whether I go fishing, whether I cut through bamboo shoots, whether I do a tennis serve, the hand always leads the racket or leads the instrument. So if I close the face, and add a curve to it. Now I'm gonna be able to lead with the hands and make it through. And if I'm working on spin, so let's look at a soccer kick right, right away. Let's say this is a soccer ball, see that? And I wanna make that soccer ball curve to the left. So when I come through, notice my foot is aiming way left, but my momentum is going way to the right. So I'm gonna be imparting a counterclockwise spin on that that's gonna curve back to the left. This is what I'm gonna reproduce with my club. So my club face is the inside of my foot. So if I take that and I turn it inward, then I'm gonna be able to swing out to the right. And if I brush properly and I release it properly, now, if you look at a very, very easy way to release the club, just hold it upside down like a sword. And imagine you're gonna be cutting through a bamboo shoot here with your sword. See that release? Notice how the weight of the sword is turning your hand over. Now take your lead hand, put it on top, just like that. And then cut through. So you'll notice that the lead hand is now has to release under the trail hand. And then you're going to get this beautiful top spin release through the shot, or same thing for a nice backhand spin through the shot. So if I put the ball here, I'm gonna use this as my intermediate point that I'm gonna to stay to the right of. I'm gonna close my face, and I'm going to let the club release very, very fully in that direction. So notice how the ball is curving violently to the left. And this is absolutely critical for you to instill. The brain needs to know what the other side of the coin is, okay? So if you go, well, I'm, I'm trying to hit it straight and it's going to the right, I'm gonna you know, try to piecemeal my way back to center, it's never gonna work. So what you need to do is close it significantly, let it release fully, get some big curves. Let's say you wanna curve it around a tree, learn how to do that. And then the brain goes, hey, every time I close it like that and I release it fully, I know the ball's gonna to curve to the left. So now that you have that kind of predictability, we can finally swing to the right. 
stay with us. I'm going to show you a very simple way to use what you see in front of you to stay on target. Now, for many of you, you don't even know where the club is passing in front of you. So notice if I put my club above the ball, you can see the blur of the club right now passing over the ball. Well, that gives me a nice direction of my swing. So if I swing back and through without stopping, notice how there's a beautiful blur moving in that direction. And there we have it. So now if I close the face significantly, I know it's going to curve to the left. Now I can swing to the right all day and I know it's coming back. So I let it swing out to the right. And look at that. Come on back, baby. There's a Bubba Watson draw right back onto center line. Wasn't that the coolest thing? Look at how far I took that out. Eight degrees out to the right, 1,300 spin back to the left, and I'm 0.5 feet. This is how I had my first two holes in one. When I started to work the ball into my flags, I had all my double eagles and my holes in one. And man, they came in bunches when I started to do that. So that's why Phil Mickelson has a lot of holes in one because he loves to work the golf ball. He loves to high, low, draw, fade. It's important for you to really sink your teeth into that. So we start off very closed. We release the club. We want to feel that nice snap release, that top spin or that that, that top spin forehand or that top spin backhand. Then we need a path. We see the blur of the club and we're gonna stay with that. Now for many of you, when you stay to the right of that intermediate point right here, in your mind, you're feeling you're going way out there. I want you to stay with that. That's a trickery that your eyes are gonna fool you with. Binocular vision is what we have. When I turn my head sideways to look at the target this way, I'm getting a lot of bad information. So when I take my line to hit my shot, it's extremely important that I use an intermediate point not just to line myself up with, but to deliver my action. So right now, it feels like my blur can stay to the right of that intermediate point. Now. If I do close it way too much, it feels like it can't start to the right. I'm going to have to hold on to it. No good. And if I open it up, I feel like it's going to start to the right and never come back. I'm going to have to do a lot of fancy bowing and, and body English to get it to come back. So which one allows me to feel like it's going to come back with a nice draw? And then Goldilocks is your best friend at that point. So I'm just going to let it go in that direction again. Yes, it's going right edge. Yes, it's going right edge. So we have another one starting to the right, landing on the right side of the green, and cozying up to the flag stick once again. So you see how I use my prediction process to do that. So we need big curves, and then we can lay off the club a little bit and do a slightly smaller curve and work our way back to the target that way. So in order for you now to get that, you want to start working, you know, once you've got that prominent draw, you can come back to your fades and you'll notice they won't be uh, these glancy, you know, slicey little fades that don't go anywhere. You're going to be able to understand from this how to hit the power fade. So what you want to do now is go to our premium channel at wisdomandgolfpremium.com. I gave you a little taste here that's going to fix you big time. You're going to love this drill. And then if you want to really start to perfect that and you want to do this with the driver, go to wisdomandgolfpremium.com, sign up for our PAR program. It's only $9.95 a month. And then you'll be able to sink your teeth into the slicers and pullers series that we're posting right now on our premium channel. Okay. So enjoy that. Keep us posted.